Good evening and welcome to the Channel Studios here in London for your international news around the world in five. The number of new coronavirus cases in China is continuing to rise after a second outbreak has emerged in the capital. Beijing has reported its second consecutive day of record numbers of COVID-19 infections, with 79 cases being recorded over just four days. That is the highest number in the city since February. The fresh cluster has been linked to a wholesale food market in the Chinese capital of Beijing that has since closed all indoor sports and entertainment venues, as well as placing 21 neighborhoods under complete lockdown. Meanwhile, European borders have begun to reopen with Belgium, France, Germany and Greece among those lifting border restrictions on Monday. In England, shops and outdoor attractions opened for the first time in nearly three months, which created long queues outside many shops across the country. Cafes and restaurants in the French capital Paris have also been allowed to fully reopen. The pandemic has gathered pace, though, in Latin America, with Brazil recording the world's second highest COVID-19 death toll. Authorities in Brazil have softened quarantine measures in different parts of the country, despite an overall rise in the number of cases. A medical examiner in the U.S. city of Atlanta has declared the death of an African-American man called Rayshard Brooks to be a homicide after he was shot in an encounter with police last week. Tony McDade. The death of Brooks has sparked another wave of anti-racism protests across America weeks after the death of George Floyd. In San Francisco, cars stopped traffic for about two hours in protest on the Oakland Bay Bridge, while in Los Angeles, tens of thousands of protesters turned up for a rally organized by the city's black community. We have to look at discrimination. Meanwhile, British Prime Minister Boris Johnson has said he will look at discrimination in the UK, saying he cannot ignore the strength of people's feelings. His comments have come after anti-racism campaigners and right-wing nationalists clashed in protests in London. Meanwhile, a Russian court has found ex-US Marine Paul Whelan guilty of spying for the United States and sentenced him to 16 years in prison after a closed trial, which US diplomats said was unfair and vague. Whelan has been in custody since he was detained in 2018 by agents from Russia's Federal Security Service, who said they caught him with a computer hard drive containing classified information. Whelan, who pleaded not guilty, said he was set up and had thought the drive that was given to him by a Russian acquaintance contained holiday photos. In a case seen as a test of the Philippines' media freedom, journalist Maria Ressa has been found guilty of cyber libel and faces up to six years in prison. Maria Ressa was the head of a Philippine news website, Rappler, known for its tough scrutiny of President Rodrigo Duterte. A writer for Rappler was also convicted. Both have been released on bail pending appeal, but could face up to six years in prison. South Korea's President Moon Jae-in has urged North Korea to return to dialogue after threats by state media in Pyongyang to cut ties and take military action. In his address, Moon said that there is definitely business that can be managed by both countries and asked the North not to close the door to dialogue. The North cut hotlines with its neighbor last week and vowed to suspend all contact if Seoul did not prevent defectors from sending in leaflets and other material. Ghana's president, Nana Afuko Addo, has announced that wearing face masks in public will be compulsory and has directed the police to enforce the directive. Ghana's coronavirus infection count has risen to nearly 12,000 with 54 deaths and about 4,000 recoveries. In a televised address, President Afuko Addo said the increase in cases was because of enhanced testing and an indication that the virus was still spreading. Meanwhile, in Ethiopia, a former teacher's TV show has grown in popularity as schools have remained closed across the country due to the COVID-19 pandemic. Brooke Tewitt has used a giraffe sock puppet to educate kids in seven Ethiopian dialects, aiming to reach 10 million children around the country. Brooke Tewitt has won numerous international awards in recognition of her work. She now has big ambitions for expanding her show across the continent. And finally, Congolese fashion designer Anifa Vemba has displayed her collections virtually after fashion shows were cancelled due to the coronavirus. Vemba has displayed what is possible in the fashion world's new normal as she has held 3D animated events watched by tens of thousands of people who have streamed them live on Instagram. Fashion brands around the world have had to cancel shows because of COVID-19 with designers looking at innovative ways of displaying their collections. 
And that's your international news around the world in five. Now back to the Channel Studios in Lagos.